when I think about Lot and this situation in Sodom and Gomorrah, just four of them left, but three made it. I can imagine that he, as he's entering into that cave, probably thought, millions have tried to make it, but I'm one of the ones who did it. And I think that when that day comes when our feet, I don't know about you, but when it's my feet, and I have stepped over the threshold of heaven, I will probably remember those words. Millions have tried to make it, but I'm one of the ones who did. Amen. And it would be my prayer this day that you will have the same desire. But when you think about, you know, I, I, I remember when I was reading Revelation chapter 22, the first part, and it talks about that there would be, there, there's a tree up there, and that there will be leaves for healing of the nation. And I'm wondering, why would there be a need for healing in heaven? I can see the need for healing here, but why in heaven? And then I read another part where it said that Jesus will wipe the tears away from their eyes. And I'm thinking, why would there be tears? Because it doesn't seem to be tears of joy we're talking about, but tears of sadness. And I think it's because when we get there, we're going to recognize and remember those who did not. And it will be a very sad, sad day. Oh, there's joy to come. But it's going to be a sad moment when we think about it. But then the, the words, millions would have tried to make it. But I'm grateful that I'm one of the ones who did. I consider it a privilege to be with you here today. Worshiping with you on this particular Sabbath day. Because I can tell you, back in those days of my foolishness, I never thought that I would be alive, never mind speaking to God's people today. My mother once said, hear the words even of a drunken man, as long as the words of the gospel. It doesn't matter where it's coming from, because truth is truth. No matter how it's being delivered, truth is truth. So even if the person is a drunk or a manic or whatever it may be, it's the truth. And I want to tell you today that if, if you were expecting someone, say, from the General Conference, like the president who was here just last week in Manila. You've got the wrong person today. If you thought that you were going to hear from someone who went through the hallowed halls of Oakwood University, although I had the opportunity, and later to Andrews University, which I did go for one day, then you, you've got the wrong person. If you're looking for someone who can say that they grew up in the church, stayed in the church all through his life, you've got the wrong person. But if you're looking for someone who can tell you that they know Christ because of what they went through, who has a story to tell, I think you've got the right person today because I know him personally as my Lord and Savior. I want to make a, a point to the brother who played the piano. I want to say thank you, uh, Ms. Morgan. In the United States, you don't see men playing the piano at church. That's very rare. So I want to say thank you. And you did it so beautifully as well. Amen. The first song that you, pray, you played, uh, To God Be the Glory, that was written by Andrew Crouch. 
and I had the privilege of meeting him 40 years ago, just after he wrote that song. So I'm pleased that it just brought back a lot of memories. Now, because of my New York exterior, I'm supposed to be hard, you know, and, and you know how they say about New Yorkers. Well, it's pretty much true. But it almost reduced me to tears to hear that song. Thank you so much. And you ladies who, and gentlemen, who have played, I will never look at sticks again the same way. That, that was just fascinating, the, the sound, you know, and the, the jiggling and, and hearing the, the different tones. And what, was that bamboo? Yes. I, you know, I, from being, you know, from the States, we don't see bamboo very much. And, and I was amazed because the, when I first moved here, and I saw them working on a building, and I'm watching them as they're climbing bamboo to get many stories up to do whatever it is that they're going to do. And I'm thinking to myself, I would never trust sticks that high in the air. In the United States, you have to, it has to be steel in order to, to climb. But uh, bamboo, incredible. And I, I want to thank you uh, for that. I want to thank you, Sister Ronnie, for um, the invitation, um, privilege to speak. I, I consider myself retired. And that means pretty much not doing anything anymore except what I want to do. And so that's how I live my life today. I'm 57 years old. It was my goal in life to retire at 55. And uh, well, I didn't officially claim to be retired until last year, so that made me 56. Um, but with all that I had gone through in my life, I'm grateful to be alive today. Man. And I'm grateful to have the privilege of being able to stand before you and to share with you the Lord's Word. Now, I, I don't want you to hold what you see um, against Sister Wani. She tried. I don't want you to hold what you see against Brother Ed and the dear brother over here behind him and the other brother to the side. I think it was you. Uh, maybe not, maybe I'm mistaken, but because what you see is what you get. You see, I, I come from the old school where I used to wear $500 suits, you know, $30 shirts, $25 ties, $125 shoes, gold cufflinks, across gold, Watch gold, three piece suits. I wouldn't drive, didn't go to my church unless I was able to drive in my new car, one of them, as I left out of my half a million dollar home. But the Lord had to take all of that away from me to let me understand it's not about you at all, it's not about what you have. Or what you, how you appear. It's what I've done for you here, right here. Mm -hmm. This is where it is. So don't hold it against them that they were not able to have your, have someone standing, and they wear the traditional garb of ministry. I had to tell someone this morning, Jesus wore sandals, which have kept him out. When I come to this country, I see nothing but sandals or flip-flops. And you know what I say? Praise them. People are comfortable. They don't have to wear all those wooden shoes and leather and be bound up and all. And besides that, it's too hot anyway. I live in a cold country where right now it's snowing. So I'm grateful to be here where it's 85 degrees and what well, that doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, 26 degrees. Uh, Celsius, or is it maybe that's too cold? I don't know. I don't know the metric system. I just know Fahrenheit. But I'm grateful that I can come and praise my Lord anyhow, anyway, and He doesn't reject me. 
So let's hear the message and not pay too much attention to the messenger this morning. I'm going to take a moment as my custom to pray before I begin. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall upon me. Spirit of the living God, dwell within me. Spirit of the living God, speak for me. Amen. Our scripture was taken from Isaiah. What book did I say? Okay, I see we need to do something right now. We're going to have to do the same thing we did in Sabbath school. We're going to do it here in our divine service. I ask questions, and I like responses. So when I say, what book did I say, that means you say, oh, that's just three. Let, let me see if I can get ten. Amen. No, no, I'm supposed to say Isaiah. <laughs> what book did I say? Isaiah. Okay, that sounds like that was 20. I think there's got to be at least 70 people in here. What book did I say? Isaiah. All right. I say Isaiah, you say Isaiah. It works the same way. We're looking at chapter 58. Uh, chapter 58, and we're looking at verse 8. Now, I'm reading out of the James, uh, King James Version, the only one that I will use. The brother tried to show me uh, his version, uh, the new international version, NIV. I would ask you, if you use that version, you need to throw it away. It is actually no good. It is a waste because, as I showed him, try to find Matthew chapter 18, verse 11 in your new NIV. You just try to find it. And one day, if you ever do find it there, you let me know because it's omitted in that Bible. And that's just one of many verses that is not in the Bible in NIV. You might want to stay with the King James Bible. Excuse me? Matthew 18. Matthew, uh, Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 18, verse 11. If you have an NIV, that's it. if you have an NIV, look for Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. And those of you who find it, just raise your hand. Oh, you found Matthew 18, 11, and 18, 11? What version are you reading? King James Version. No, no, I'm looking for the NIV. Did anybody find it? Who, who uses the NIV? Did you, no, did you find it in the NIV? So if that's missing, then what else is missing? Huh? Huh? Chapter 18, verse, verse 11. That's only in the NIV, New Testament, New International Version. It's not in there. It's not there. So stop looking for it. You won't find it. It's in the King James, yes, it's supposed to be. But it's not in the NIV. So I'm saying to you, if it's missing in the NIV, what else is missing in the NIV? You're not getting so you might want to try to stay with the King James Version. At least you're going to get everything in there. Amen? Amen. All right. Was, did you not know that? No. You know it now. Until, until this year. You know it now. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. I'm a writer, so as a writer, words mean something to me. Uh, I, I look at them a little deeper because it, it has to convey a message. Looking at starting, I want to actually look, go right to verse 12. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Because there's something in here that, that I think we need to see. Chapter 58, verse 12. Have we found it now? Okay, then let's, let, me, let me read it. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste place. Stop. And they 